know where we are? Yes, we are. No, hold on. We're still preparing to go live. What? I let you I, know. It says we're live on YouTube. Sorry, on I feel like I'm having a hard time. I'm. Why can't I unmute somebody? Because I am a co-host. I'm trying to unmute Omar. So it's live on YouTube now. Uh, let me see. Are we recording? Jonathan, are we recording at this at this point? Yes. Yes, click on record. And now all of us co-hosts can see on the left top of the screen that we are live on YouTube. All right, let's go ahead. All right, very good. Um, all right, this is the May 4th Traffic and Transportation Committee meeting, CB12, call to order at 710. Um, we have a couple of things on the agenda as people have seen, but before we get started, I just wanted to make the committee and everyone else aware of a few developments, which you may have seen already, but just so everybody's on the same page. Um, as of today, we had the first seven miles of street openings to assist in um, social distancing while outside. Uh, a couple of those are in the CB12 district. These first seven miles were primarily adjacent to parks or near them. Um, so we have Fort Tryon Park, Margaret Corbin Circle. Um, there's a total of 0.9 miles in that section. Um, that we've heard a lot from the community on that roadway being open. So while it isn't a park, um, this, uh, this still gives some people room to spread out. Um, Laurel Hill Terrace near Highbridge Park um, from Amsterdam, that's 0.4 miles. And then there's one sort of stub block of Dykeman between Broadway and Seaman Avenue that is also open, but that's just like 0.05 miles. Um, in other news from the MTA that people might have seen, um, starting Wednesday is the new MTA cleaning regime. Um, the, the system will be closed between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. And there will be sort of more of a deep clean every 24 hours, which is a faster pace than it has been. Um, in a related announcement, uh, there's sort of um, some, some code of conduct enhancements for MTA um, that go to how long somebody could stay in a station without going anywhere um, and, and things like that, which I can share out to people um, as well that came in sort of in conjunction. And I think because of all the concerns, some of which were raised on this committee, about the challenges at certain subway stations, particularly at end of lines, we're seeing in terms of managing cleanliness and homeless population and you know riders and, and all of that. So um, as I understand it, again, May 6 is when the, the new cleaning sort of regime goes into effect. Um, tonight, first on the agenda, we have the long, long awaited um, DOT presentation on uh, the area around the Riverside Oval. And we have uh, a number of people from DOT here. Um, and so at this time, uh, if you, I'm gonna hand it to DOT, try to get you guys unmuted and um, and if, Ebenezer and Jonathan can just run support on getting you. Do you have a presentation tonight? And just um, also do the, uh, the introductions from the DOT side, just make sure you introduce the whole group so we have that for our notes, et cetera. Great, um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, is that Kimberly or is that Jennifer? No, this is, this is uh, Carissa. Hi, Clarissa. Um, but I do have a presentation. Should I share it on my screen? Um, yeah, you should be able to do that. This now we're a little bit out of my ken. Jonathan or Ebenezer, she should just be able to share as a panelist. 
Carissa? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm saying, wait, are they still with us? She should be able to, I think. Okay. This is Kimberly. Okay. I'm going to turn on my video and oh, I'll there you share. are. Ah, you should be able to just share your screen and we'll all get to see it. Okay, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Whoops. You can probably turn that on, Debbie. One moment, please. <laughs> Hmm. Just better. Yeah, Jonathan, can you get can you throw me an assist? I cannot get into the um can you do the um uh who ne who needs to share the screen? Uh, Carissa Lidstrand. <laughs> Carissa? Who is yep. that? Carissa, you you she's on panelist. She's like it's K A R I S S A Lidstrin L I D Strand. Okay. Um. Jimmy, you okay? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mute myself, didn't I? Yeah, sorry about that. No, I'm okay. Did you cough into your elbow? Um, all right, Carissa, um, here. please try now to share okay. um, the screen. And uh, Jonathan, when we get this set okay. up, if you could just you got jump it, in. Carissa, you got it. Great. Jonathan, if you can just share the YouTube channel information on the Q&A, we have Wendy Olivo from, uh, the uh, assembly member's office just asking yes. for that. So it'd be great to put up on the okay. Q&A. Thank you. I will. Okay, so everyone can see my screen okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. they can see your screen. And Carissa, I'm sorry, one more thing that I just wanna say now that we are officially called to order because I said it before we were called to order. Um, so the way we're gonna do this is Carissa is gonna, uh, DOT is gonna present this item the TNT committee will have um, will then discuss and ask questions, and then I will open it to CB12 members, um, and and then to the public. And so when we get to people that are in this meeting as attendees, I will make you a panelist when it when you're. Uh, it's time for your comments. So just do the hand raise so we can track who wants to speak. All right. All right. And finally, I will stop interrupting you, Carissa, and hand it off to you. <laughs> All right. Um, so my name is Carissa Lidstrand. I'm uh, part of the pedestrian unit at DOT. I'm here tonight with my colleagues, Dan Wagner, as well as uh, Kimberly Rancor and Lyle Blackwood from the Manhattan Borough Commissioner's Office. Um, and so we would like to present a street improvement project along Riverside Drive um, from 155th Street to about 161st Street. So um, we're gonna start with background and then go into existing conditions and then talk about the proposal. So a little bit about the background. Um, we've received several community requests for different types of improvements along Riverside Drive um, and with that, we've had um, several engagement um, sessions with elected officials as well as community members over the past year to discuss um, different issues they've seen along Riverside Drive. Um, the primary focus has been from 155th to 158th Street. Um, and yeah, so we'll get into some of the existing conditions. Oh, and we also had our um, street ambassadors do community outreach um, at this location as well to garner community feedback. So a little bit about the safety data. Um, thankfully, 
Uh, we have not had any fatalities um, between 2013 and 2017 for this uh, corridor. I'm not um, and so, sorry to interrupt, but I'm not seeing a screen change at all. Oh, it's not on the safety data? No, it's still on the title slide on my screen. Oh, let me. Yeah, me too. You're right, Lyle. Thank That's now it. it's working. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just I'll just stay out of full screen mode. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Chris, I didn't interrupt you. Is this going to be available after? Yes. Yeah, we'll put it online tomorrow. Um, okay. So um, yeah, so we're trying to be proactive here instead of reactive, since there have not been um, any fatalities um, between 2013 and 2017, um, and so. We'd like to talk about the existing conditions. So um, this, what you're looking at here is an aerial view of the corridor. So on the left side of the screen near the A is Riverside Drive West. And then we have Riverside Drive um, throughout the middle of the screen and 158th Street, just to kind of orient yourself with what we're looking at here. And so we've kind of broken up uh, this into four different sections, A through D. Um, so we'll talk about the existing conditions in each of those sections there. So starting at section A, which is at um, Riverside Drive and Riverside Drive West, um, as well as 155th Street. So the first condition is that Riverside Drive is currently two lanes in each direction. And when we spoke with uh, community members, there were discussions about how Riverside Drive doesn't feel like a residential street. A lot of people use it as a cut through. Um, and so with two lanes in each direction, there's actually low vehicle volumes for um, it being two lanes. And then moving to the west at the intersection of 155th Street, where you see the number two. This is quite a large intersection, as you can see in the photo um, on the below left. Um, and this creates um, turning movements for vehicles. They can turn uh, wherever um, they want. Um, and as a pedestrian, when you're crossing the intersection here, you can't really gauge where uh, that vehicle might be turning. So the blue line represents kind of a sharp turn of a vehicle that they could do. And then the um, pedestrian crossing, there's no um, paint here. So there's no crosswalk denoting that pedestrians can cross here. And it's also a long crossing distance. And then the next section, section B, which is at Riverside Drive and 157th Street, uh, when we spoke with elected officials and some members of the community, there was um, this desire to have crossings um, at this intersection of Riverside Drive. We've also observed during site visits that people do cross here. Um, there have also been discussions about the pedestrian ramps on the southeast corner of Riverside Drive and 157th Street. And then moving along to 158th Street. So a typical intersection has four legs. This intersection, as you can see, has six. So it becomes complex in nature because it has six legs. Um, one of the things that results from this is um, long crossing distances. So you can see um, at the number two, there's it's 84 feet to cross to the median and then another 41 feet for a pedestrian. Um, and this also creates a lot of um, conflicting turns. Um, vehicles can turn left at multiple points coming from say like 158th Street. Um, and so when our ambassadors were out um, talking to the community, this intersection kept coming up as being kind of terrifying, if you will. We have a quote from someone when they were doing outreach saying, this intersection is terrifying. The DOT needs to do something about this. And then uh, we also 
want to talk about Riverside Drive north of 158th Street, where it connects back to Riverside Drive west. Um, so this is section D. So currently, as you can see um, in the photo number one, which is a cross section of the street. So we have the buildings on the west side, as well as the sidewalk, and then the parking, and then two travel lanes in each direction, and then the retaining wall. Um, so that's currently how the street is. Um, and taking a look at Riverside Drive West, um, something to note is that there is parking um, currently along the retaining wall there. So thinking about ways that we can uh, make improvements along this corridor. So some of these include um, painted um, spaces. So painted pedestrian spaces or crosswalks. Um, the top middle photo here um, is a picture at 155th and Broadway. You might recognize this painted pedestrian space. There's also um, other types of treatments that we can do such as concrete. Um, if there's no utility issues in the way, our um, in-house crews um, can construct pedestrian refuge islands, as you can see on the bottom right. Um, and then also we have a treatment called enhanced crossing. So this is a crossing um, that does not have a control such as a signal or a stop sign, but it does have a crosswalk as well as um, pedestrian signage that alerts vehicles that pedestrians will be crossing here. And New York state law is you have to yield to the pedestrian as they're in the crosswalk. So with those tools in mind, um, we'd like to discuss um, some proposals that we have for this corridor. So uh, we're keeping with the same theme for the proposal of looking at sections A through D as we did before in the existing conditions. So starting with section A, um, as we saw Riverside Drive was two lanes in each direction and it does have low volume. So it doesn't need to have two lanes. So we can reduce that from two to one in each direction. As you can see here um, on both sides of the median, we could have one travel lane. And so what this gets us at this intersection of 155th Street is we can create this new geometry that helps to slow those vehicle turns as they're turning from Riverside Drive to 155th Street. So if you're a pedestrian in this painted space, you can gauge where that vehicle is going to turn now, since it's more of a um, narrow space here. Um, it reduces the crossing distance for the pedestrians and makes them more visible to the vehicles. And then moving down to 157th Street, we continue the treatment of having one lane in each direction. Um, but as we observed, as well as people were telling us they would like to see a crossing here, we did an analysis and we can um, add an enhanced crossing on both sides of 157th Street, as well as putting in um, concrete medians. So you can see on the west side, a concrete median, as well as on the east side. And so this will make pedestrians more visible to the vehicles traveling on Riverside Drive. It'll help to shorten the crossing distances and um, adding the painted pedestrian space as noted in number three, we can help to adjust the geometry here um, to clarify vehicle movements. Um, and then we can also install new pedestrian ramps in this area as well. And so just to know um, the parking um, adjustments with all of these geometry tree changes comes out to a net change of plus one for this section uh, from 155th to 158th Street. So taking um, a closer look at 158th Street, we continue the median. Um, so currently there's um, the pedestrian islands. There's one on Riverside Drive, as well as Edward Morgan Place. And so we would like to replace those um, concrete um, islands and then um, 
we would also like to restrict the we would like to restrict the right hand turn from 158th Street to Riverside Drive just for trucks. Um, and then also build out a concrete curb extension on the northern part of the intersection where there's the number three. Uh, this will help to shorten those crossing distances that were so long before because of this large uh, six legged intersection. And the way we can do this is by converting Riverside Drive north of 158th Street from two way to a one way southbound. So we would restrict the northbound movement. Um, and so we could get this concrete island here. And so we'll talk about the conversion in a few slides. Um, but with the restriction, that really helps to clarify the traffic movements at this intersection. So many times when we were talking to members of the community, elected officials, when our street ambassadors were out there, everyone talked about how unsafe they felt at this intersection. And it is a very complex intersection. Um, and so restricting one of the directions of travel can help to eliminate one of those confusing movements. So for example, if you're traveling north on Edward Morgan Place, instead of having five different ways that you can travel, there are now four. And so this really helps pedestrians as well as cyclists at this intersection to gauge where a vehicle might be traveling. And so um, looking at the conversion a little more, so this is uh, north of 158th to where it connects to Riverside Drive West. So just that um, segment there. Um, and you can see in the cross sections again, as you saw before the existing, where there's the parking and two travel lanes, we would like to propose parking, travel lane, and then another parking lane against the retaining wall. And if you remember along Riverside Drive West, there's currently parking along the retaining wall. So we're continuing that treatment down to 158th Street. And what this gets you is about 150 parking spaces, or about 50 parking spaces um, along this retaining wall. And so um, I know the schedule might be something we will talk about more, um, given that we're currently on a Zoom conference during a pandemic. Um, and so we're trying to prioritize pushing this project along. And so thinking about different ways we can do that, given that we're all working from home and not a lot of construction is currently <coughs> happening. And so we've split this into uh, three different phases. So we're thinking that phase one could be the two, two lanes on Riverside Drive from 155 to 158. We could reduce that to one lane in each direction as well as install the painted curb extensions that we saw. And then phase two could be um, the conversion of Riverside Drive from 158, from, yeah, from 158th to Riverside Drive West, adding the 50 parking spaces. And then phase three would be um, building out all of those concrete elements that we saw, as well as the enhanced crossing and the pedestrian ramps. And so this is just a summary um, for your records after um, this presentation. Um, and really there's so many great benefits to this project. Um, it, by narrowing the lanes on Riverside Drive could help to make this segment feel more like a residential street. It provides uh, more visibility for pedestrians and shorter crossing distances and really helps to clarify traffic movements at 158th Street. And so now we'd like to open it up to questions. Um, thank you, Carissa. Let me just make sure I've got committee members unmuted. Um, Jonathan, 
I, for whatever reason, I can't unmute people. Why as a co-host can I not unmute people? No, yes, you can. If for some reason they cannot um, get on mute. Um, we don't know what is happening on the other side, but yes, as a co-host, you can mute or you mute anyone. I'm, I'm unmuting, trying to unmute Jim and Gerard and I'm oh. pressing unmute, nothing's happening. No, whoever is um, panelist, you don't have to take care of it. They can do that by yourself. Okay, I can't override. All right, um, so starting with, um, well, first thanks to DOT um, for this presentation. Um, first, I'm gonna open it to um, the committee members. If you are muted, for example, Jim, let me know. Um, Marie, I see you in as a panelist. I just want you to hold until um, we go through the committee questions. And then I know you are waiting because you have some stuff as well. Thank you for being here. Um, so, okay, so I'll just open it up. Anybody on TNT that wants, you should all be available to speak now. Okay. It would help if um, the person doing the presentation took their presentation off the screen now because it's interfering with some of the stuff I can do. Like up until now, I couldn't yeah. unmute myself. Much better. Thank there. you very much. Thank you. You can you. always put it back if we need to refer to it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. We're, we're also trying to get Richard Allman in because um, he was having problems with the, uh, because the links, you know, you couldn't link off the email. Um, so, Okay. Anybody again, Gerard, Bruce, Jim, anything for DOT? I think, I just, I, let me just comment that I'm, I'm very impressed with what I've seen because I've driven around there and I've walked around there and I always, <laughs> like was mentioned, that one intersection with all the legs is horrifying. So I'm glad you, and it looks like, you know, I, most of what, you know, it, it all seems very sensible to me. Thank you. Um, I have something I want to say also. Uh, I give a little different perspective because um, I cycle through there consistently, okay. northbound on Riverside Drive, probably. It, it has to be close to a thousand times already in the last few years because I'm just that much of an avid cyclist. And um, I'm really happy to see this change from that perspective because I can't tell you how many times a car has been trying to make their way near the cemetery area and abruptly turns over or the misdirection that occurs at that intersection that had the five different ways that one can go. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing that happens from a cyclist perspective, especially on Riverside Drive, that many people might not be paying attention to is that cyclists that are going northbound on Riverside Drive actually turn on 158 because they're trying to avoid 165th Street Riverside Drive up to Fort Washington, which is a mess because of all the stuff that goes on with the hospital and that incline. That's mm -hmm. a high grade incline. So what, you know, if you're fit, it's, a pro it's not a problem. But even when you're fit, it's a problem because there's so much traffic in there in terms of a jam that mm -hmm. cyclists, those that aren't fit at all, go into cars, put their feet down at the most random and up two times. So what they do is they take 158, take a right there and then take Upper Riverside Drive, the one way that goes all the way up. So, uh -huh. From a class, yeah, it happens actually quite a lot. It's a, it's a very narrow, that upper riverside is very narrow. That's a one way that you kind of show that has like a 40 foot uh, gap mm -hmm. for a pedestrian to walk by. Yeah, a cyclist who takes the 158 turn on riverside goes there to that five point intersection and then takes that upper riverside section all the way up so then they can cross over and avoid 165th Street and Riverside to get up to Fort Washington. So that might not have been a point of this project, but part of that, what I just saw there from that perspective, it helps them, it helps clarify that because I can't tell you how many times that intersection causes a lot of confusion in terms of cars, cyclists, and pedestrians all trying to figure out what to do at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. so this clears up a lot of that. Well, that's great to hear. Um, 
And Maria, okay. I see you. You're in my stack for the next round. So is that it from the committee? I just wanted to compliment. I think it's a very, very thoughtful, well, well thought out plan. So very nice. Thanks, Gerard. Okay, by my um, tally, we have Maria, Steve, and I believe Vivian um, Ducat, who's a public member uh, in the stack from CB12. Um, can I start with Maria, please? Thank you. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay. Thank, thank you. I, uh, I missed most of the beginning of the presentation because I had a problem you know, trying to get in. Um, as you probably well know, I, um, I reside in this area for uh, close to um, 58 years in the same building, the same area that we are discussing about the uh, trying to um, uh, make the low, what we call the middle drive um, which is from 158th Street to 165th Street and vice versa, right? To one way, going south. Um, I have taken a, um, uh, a survey of the people that live in, our, in this particular community. And I will hope that all of you uh, understand and I have no personal agenda but I have to uh, make sure that you uh, understand that the, the two-way street from 158th Street to 165th Street or to 160th Street, what they call it, going into the Riverside West uh, cannot be changed. And let me just make a few points around there. About 18 years ago, this plan, uh, this suggestion was made, uh, the former late assembly person Danny Faro met with the commissioner. We walked, we went over that area step by step to make sure that everybody understood that there is no, nothing for the people who live on this particular lower drive or the upper drive. I, I believe that Omar mentioned about the, how narrow that upper drive is going north. Um, right. By making a change, on the um, you know going south only. Uh, this is a you know, this is not a straight line street. You know it has a curve. It curves on the embank what we call the embankment. We use uh, the 158th Street if we were to use like we do now, coming from downtown, taking the highway, going up 158th Street, in order to get to the access to. 811 through 869, we go in the lower drive, which is the middle drive, and we make a left there. All right. If we are, if this is changed, goes through, uh, everyone will have to do two things. Either go up to the low, to the upper drive, there is no uh, cross streets up there. You will wind up on 165th Street because there are no street lights on the, you know, in that area, on the upper drive. But if in the, another way, you will get to 158th Street, stop on that intersection, then had to make a right turn and go around, around the oval, around, there is a, a bus stop there for the number six bus. You continue where Steve Simon live on 765. You will then stop on the red, red or green light that will add to the trip about like two minutes. If the light is not, it's not green, uh, then you proceed to Riverside Drive West to gain, get down to the middle drive where the buildings that I mentioned before, A11 through A69 uh, are on that side. Now, there are almost, there are, this is a, a very wide uh, area. Uh, the people, you know, there's a parking, on the, in one side of the street and the other, which is the embankment, have no parking. So when we come, the people drive up to 158th Street, turn left to come all the way up. I mean, you can get quickly uh, to the area of the, um, the uh, bridge, the uh, uh, Presbyterian Hospital, if you take that turn. But if you were to do only the upper drive, 
you will encounter a very narrow street with one way parking and people, if you have any type of blockage by someone that is dismounting someone, you will have to wait, you will have to wait, or you will drive on the sidewalk, which is not acceptable. I have seen this happening. Now the EMS, if you have an ambulance uh, picking up someone that live in one of those buildings from A11 and A21, A17, A25, A35, A49, and so on, the ambulance have access to the, you know, going north to go into the, you know, the area of the, you know, the hospital or whatever they need to take that, you know, that person after they are picked up. If you, if you make that going north, where are the ambulances? will come to pick up whoever they need to, you know, to pick up or to check. There is no need. I know that uh, the DOT have a problem with this new long uh, buses, the uh, number six going into the bronze. They would like to expedite the, you know, and move the, the, uh, the, uh, the buses forward, but it's impeding this, the discharging. People are being stopped to my sister who use a walker if we take a taxi or a whatever, automobile, whatever, uh, for us to get out of the car, of course, we're going to have a black elevator going south, but the bus drivers insist on what they are doing. They, do, they can go through, but what they do, they block the package. So the people coming north have to back up and that's incremental because then it's forcing people who are disabled, people that are taking out children from the car to move, you know, to get out of the way. And that's criminal. The way we see it, people in our community. I survey people in that area. Danny Faro did it in the early and the late 80s, the beginnings of the 90s, and they made sure that that, con that continued being a two-way street. Uh, I understand that for safety, I saw some numbers about some accidents and things like that. In five years, in five years incident, I think we are not talking about 34th Street and Fifth Avenue. We are talking a residential area. We have to be aware that people, the sensitivity of the issue, accessibility, the protection of the people who are in need of help, not just to expedite the number six bus, so they can go to Yankee Stadium or to, you know, Hans Point for right. two or three minutes long, you know. Maria. Yes, dear. Um, let me just have you wrap up there. So if yeah. we, um, I am open. So uh, um, let me just make a little clarification. Chris, can you just, Debbie, let me just very uh, quickly. I am not opposed to any changes, but in this particular area, it's really important that the two-way street remains as it is now. Um, uh, Chris, is there any, um, and I'm sorry, because Maria, I don't know sort of when you came in on the presentation, is there anything you, you might be able to add to the thinking behind that, that switch as it relates to the EMS and, you know, that issue that when the bus is coming down, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you, you end up blocked and anything you could provide on that? Yeah, definitely. So um, there have been a few discussions about um, creating pockets of like no standing or no parking anytime. So different types of signage along that section of Riverside Drive. So if someone does need to pull over to unload something um, at one of the buildings or to drop off someone, then they're able to do so without blocking the travel lane. And so that would help um, with the buses that are traveling southbound, um, as well as any emergency vehicles um, that are in that area. Um, but um, we, I would like to take a look at, I know, Maria, you were mentioning um, the different diversions. Um, and I think I followed you most of the time when you were speaking, but if um, you could write that down and send that to us, your concerns about um, the southbound direction and getting off of the highway, um, we can take a look at that a little more as well. 
additionally, I, I would like to throw in, this is Dan Wagner. We did run all of the proposal through all of the emergency services that were mentioned, uh, fire, ambulances, uh, MTA, the all have approved the proposal saying it would not uh, be detrimental to their services. Okay, okay. And I can just uh, add one more thing. Sorry, this is Kimberly from Manhattan Fire Commissioner's Office. That the no standing areas um, to make create like more access for emergency vehicles is something we've done on some very congested cross town uh, routes in Midtown. So it is something that we've found to be very effective at um, reducing sort of the double parking and that blocking of more narrow roadways. Okay, um, Maria, Debbie, I, if no, I could just interject, um, yeah. we need Chanel to add Mary Anderson, send a new invitation to Mary Anderson so she can get in because she can't get into this meeting. Yeah, and Richard okay. Allman has had great difficulty. Thank you. I am. Um, I am. Yeah, just give me a minute. Sorry, Ebenezer, this is just a cry for please let's start putting it in the email that people need to cut and paste. But then um, Richard was left without the ability to, like, he couldn't find the password then. And so let me just get this for this to Mary. Just give me a sec. I just oh, sent Barry the, the email. Okay. The it just occurs to me if I'm sending Richard Thank you. and, okay, I'm sending Richard and Mary my panelist thing. That's not going to work, right? Um, Ebenezer, is yes, Ebenezer it's, it's, still on? Yes, I, I still hear. Uh, there is there is a situation with certain links that go out that for whatever reason don't do not when you click it doesn't work, but then if you copy and paste to the browser they work. Uh, I was able to yeah. help Maria Luna by by for what for what in another email. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Mary and Richard's been trying it for like. 20 minutes and I haven't been able to multitask and well, even when I'm sending stuff. So if you, can you work on um, Mary and Richard Allman right now? And um, they're trying to get in, they can't get in. Um, and Maria, I see you. I'm just gonna go through, um, we're gonna come back to you. And uh, so hold that thought, but could I have, uh, Steve and then Vivian. Um, and Steve Simon, you, oh, sorry, I need to pr promote you. Bear with me. He's already okay. promoted. You should be good to talk, Steve. All right, can I talk now? Oh, yeah, you're good. We can hear. Okay, well, uh, in, in, compa in comparison to uh, Maria, uh, I've only lived in the community for 48 years. Um, I'm, I'm a, a co-chair of the Riverside Oval Association, as well as a member of uh, Board 12. Um, I, I, uh, I don't want to take a position right now on, uh, on uh, the block where Maria lives, uh, uh, what we often call the inner drive. In fact, I would also like to see uh, a written copy of her remarks because uh, they were a little difficult to follow. Um, I, I mean, I gather what, what her main points are, but I'd, I'd like more time to uh, consider it. With respect to the area between 155 and 158, I, I see a lot of good stuff there. And, uh, and, I, uh, uh, and you know, the community has been waiting a long time for some of these improvements or to, to see some uh, improvements there. I um, mean, one, one thing I'd like to uh, ask in, uh, uh, in response to uh, Omar's comments, we we'll, uh, I, I, we do get a lot of bike traffic uh, along that uh, street, uh, the Riverside Drive. W will the uh, if we only have one traffic lane, will that traffic lane be wide enough to accommodate both the bikes and uh, vehicles? Uh, so the travel lane um, will be the standard width, about eleven feet. Um, so a vehicle and cars um, have enough room. Um, not side by side to travel, but, um, you know, like in the travel lane. Well, I, I think you have to anticipate that there will be times when, uh, when they will be side by side. So, uh, 
I mean, to, to the extent where we might be able to accommodate maybe another foot or two, uh, you, you might want to consider that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in, in, gen uh, uh, in general, but I, I would just like to say that since the community has been waiting so long for these changes, and since there is a great deal of interest in, in them, and, uh, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who uh, uh, weren't able to call in tonight, I would ask that the committee not take a position on this or and that the DOT not implement anything until we have an opportunity to have a meeting right there in the community to uh, show the plan to people so they know what's going to happen. Uh, I, you know, I think uh, we'd be better off if we have more buy-in and people aren't taken by surprise when these changes are made. Um, let's let's actually, I mean, this, Steve, you know, this is a presentation that's been postponed sort of more or less since January month to month. And um, and we did have one night where the committee also, I, well, actually, let me leave it at that um, for the moment, but let's come back to that point. Um, because Vivian Ducott is, uh, Vivian, you should be able to speak and you are from, uh, you are from the area you and I know have been very involved. Yeah, so you I'm can go Steve ahead. I'm Steve, co-chair in Riverside Oval. I've only lived here for 16 years, so that's sort of nothing, I'm a newbie. But the first meeting we had with the intrepid people from DOT was in the snow in November of 2018 when we thought that that was novel. We hadn't had the novel coronavirus. And we've actually been working on this issue for that long. Um, and we've had a collection of people in the midst of the day meeting upstairs where the corral used to be. So Steve, it's not as if it's new to a lot of people because we've, we've schlepped around in the heat, bunches of people. So don't think that there aren't more than about three of us involved, because there are. Um, the two things I want to say is that I have come to the strip where Maria, Powell, where Maria Luna lives in a taxi frequently. I've sold a couple of apartments on that strip and had to come back and come back from other places. Mm -hmm. The cabs let you out as they're going north with the, the southbound traffic coming at you on the lower drive which is deeply terrifying. Um, so they let you out to the left and you're heading north. And it's to me, it's an ex extremely unsafe street as it is, as two way. I never quite understood why it was that way. And I think to change, I hate to argue with you because I like you very much, Maria Luna, but I don't agree with you. I think that if we're promoting safety, Let's get it one way because that's the answer. And I was opposed to Denny Farrell's change on 157th, having it only go west, but I've gotten used to change and change can also be good. Um, I wanted to remind you guys, and I know it's minor compared to what you're saying, but we talked also about signage. We talked about people coming up 158th Street from the highway and knowing, not knowing where the hell Riverside Drive is versus Edward Morgan Place versus and I think, I think it's also very important to sign, to sign everything there. I know it's a sort of secondary thing because, because except for those who, of us who live around there, they don't, people don't know where they're going and those mistaken turns or those hesitations at the top of the hill at 158th and Riverside Drive can be dangerous too. Um, I'm really happy we've gotten to this point. I saw the people from DOT looking at each other after the last meeting, like we were this contentious bunch and we seemed to like what you were doing and you were going, oh my God, what's wrong with these people? They, they actually agree with us. Um, it, but in fact, that's what happens when you come up with something good, we're all happy. Except for Steve um, and Bria Luna. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so I have um, Daniel, I believe, on the attendee that's waiting, but um, with his hand up. But Jim, what does that mean? Oh, James oh, you're a panel. Yeah. All right, so that means I would like to speak. I just want to respond very quickly to Steve's suggestion that we actually wait until we have like a old-fashioned brick and mortar meeting with the community. Um, that may not happen for far, far longer than we would hope. So that may not be um, a valid um, criterion from my point of view. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, and I should remark that the one of the last times that we canceled it as an agenda item, the news went out so late that we actually had a few people at our it was probably our last in person meeting who who um, were able to share some thoughts, obviously uh, concerns more than thoughts, because at that point, obviously, the proposal wasn't related. Um, but Maria, let me come back to you before we move on to uh, Daniel and the attendee. If you could just unmute yourself. Uh, oh, no, I think I did it. You can go ahead, Maria. Thank you so much. Uh, Vivian, I'm sorry that you didn't invite me to the um, uh, the festivities at the El Corral. You know, I live right down the block. I would just take me like two minutes just to go and, and join you. Um, I disagree with you because I live on this area. One another factor that we have to consider is like traffic coming. If I come from or anybody comes from up 158th Street up to the um, to the intersection, I cannot in this proposal I cannot go le left, right? I will have to go either all the way up to Broadway to 165th Street and come around the hospital area, the Mills thing, then come down Riverside Drive West to get me to my, you know, going south. Or I will have to go right on Riverside Drive into the Oval area, which is very nice area. Then I'll have to pass the Simons building. I have to wait for the next green or red light in the corner, going to Riverside Drive West, go around all the way by River Terra, turn around and then come to my area. That will add about $12 more to my fee for that taxi. We need to also consider that it's gonna be costly for some people, all right? Some people cannot walk, like someone says to me, well, you can get up on 158th Street and walk. But unfortunately, not everybody is 15 years old and you know, it's being pushed around in a, uh, you know, on a tramp. Anyway, I am going, I, I just I think that suggestion by, by Steve, this doesn't have to be rushed. We need, this is going to impact a lot of people. And I think we need to, to consider the people who live on this particular area. It's not just Vivian or Bruce or whoever live on the Oval area. As I said, it's a beautiful area, including the cemetery. But reality is that we need to consider the usage of the people. And Vivian is not that dangerous. I haven't seen an, an incident across from 835, 839, and 845. I'm not saying that there is no incident, but no major incident in comparison to other areas. So just to say that this place is not safe, is nothing, you know, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. This place is safe, including when you are getting off a taxi or a vehicle and the other side of the street, people can cross to their building without danger. Okay, now my problem is, is when the bosses try to get to the red light on the corner 158, they would like to get everybody out of the way, including people with, you know, in, um, in, with Walker or people who are 85 or 90 years old, and the people with children. So just, I want you to consider again, to delay any, any, um, any proposal, any changes on this, you know, proposal by making this one way street because People who live on this particular area are not linked to Zoom. They don't have right now information about this plant. And for us as a community board to vote on something like that, that is going to impact in so many people, I think it's criminal. Even I'm going to use, you know, well, I'm going to be okay. nice. All right. Okay, so Let's thank have. you so much. All I right. hope that your media listen to, to us and I, you know, and they will see the light. EMS, the fire department, they can get any place, any way, any which way they want to. I understand that. But the people in our area and the lower drive also have a voice on this. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Maria. Um, I, Daniel, do you still yeah. have a comment you wanted to make? Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Daniel. I'm a uh, community board um, 12 resident. And it uh, looks good. A couple of things I just want to say is, uh, is it possible to add trees to the new um, reclaimed space, like where there's curb extensions to cover up um, tarred areas um, at 155th Street and along uh, Riverside Drive. 
And secondly, um, just in regards to the lane width and bike lane, uh, bike travel along there, this might be a situation where just keeping it at the 11 feet would be okay. Um, the thought about widening it to allow bike and cars to travel together, I think might make it a little more dangerous. Um, so my thoughts would be to keep it narrower would be okay. Um, so, hi, this is Carissa. Um, to answer your question about the trees, um, from my understanding, you're talking about the painted spaces that we were proposing? Right. Oh, okay. Um, so, we don't plant trees in painted spaces, but there is the potential for um, planters if we have a maintenance partner to maintain those, um, the vegetation that gets put in the planters. Um, so that could be an option if the community board or a nonprofit or someone in the neighborhood wants to take on that task. Um, so tree, trees that get put in um, by, by new curb extensions and whatnot, that's not DOT? You, uh, well, and so the, the ones that you're specifically referencing are um, the painted spaces. So they're just um, like painted materials on the ground with the plastic, um, like delineators for the space. Um, like there's the painted space at 155 in Broadway. So it's kind of like that type of space. Yep, I understand. There's a, there's a large area there at 155th Street and in the spirit of shading the community and hard services, um, if that, I mean, yeah. Carissa, what's, is there an opportunity for that in the concrete median or is that a, um, to be determined based on feasibility or? Uh, yeah, the concrete uh, medians around 157th. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, so we, yeah, it depends on parks availability of planting trees. Um, so we do have that in the proposal currently to add trees to the medians, um, but we're still in discussion about that. So if possible, we will do it in that location, but it still mm -hmm. needs to be determined. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. All right. Um, Steve, is that is that you having your hand up for another another round of question? Yeah, uh, quickly. Um, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Carissa, between 157 and 158 is the uh, plan to put in a, uh, a, a full length concrete median? Yes. All right, so is that, uh, so there's potential for trees there? Yes, yeah, we um, would like to plant trees. I know um, that it's kind of up to the Parks Department, uh, which you work for DPR, right? Yes, yeah, so we can discuss that, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, we, I think I know how to arrange it. Um, okay. All right, and, and let me just say, uh, by any chance, did you ever see the original version of the movie Gloria? I there, don't there, believe so. Okay, there's a fantastic scene in that movie, which was largely filmed in our neighborhood. Of oh. um, I forget the actress's name, but there was a scene where they're trying to show her uh, like going off with some kid and uh, going off in... Uh, you know, and then making believe that she's going a great distance when she's doing like six different shots in the intersection at 158 and Riverside Drive. So uh, I suggest uh -huh. you, uh, I suggest you incorporate that clip into your presentation because it, it it shows how many different ways there are to get into that intersection and uh, and how these uh, how this uh, movie director decided to try to use that intersection to show. Uh, uh, make believe that he was going a, a great distance when he was taking all those shots in that same street. Um, I, 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 that out. <laughs> okay. um, I'm, I am uh, um, I am hopeful that sometime in the next couple of months, uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus uh, uh, crisis will wane, and uh, we'll be. Uh, there's got to be a point soon where we could be able to uh, uh, be in the same room with each other again, and I would hope that we could still have. A, a community meeting uh, to discuss this. Th this is a worthwhile topic uh, to uh, present to people in the community, and uh, and uh, I would hope that uh, we could uh, we could arrange to do that. Okay. 
Um, okay, I'm just, just doing one more scan. Okay, so um, we have Richard Allman as, as me, who has appeared, um, but unfortunately was not able to get in during this presentation. Richard, we're just um, concluding uh, the Riverside Drive between 155 and 160 um, presentation. Um, I guess I my question to the committee is that um, you know this is an item that is a reso item. Um, I my intention was that we we vote on this, um, but I guess I'd like to hear from the committee because and I'll say that and the and what's driving that is. <clears throat> You know, we heard from a lot of people over a lot of months and the fact that we kept having to move the the chin particular while out with her dog. And there has been a lot of urgency and a lot of frustration was my sense from the people that had shown up you know, all those months thinking that there was going to be a presentation. Um, but I, um, Bruce, I guess I'm sort of looking to you to sort of weigh in here and then also anybody else on the committee, but on, on whether we, you know, choose to delay. Okay. Again. So first of all, I think everybody agrees on the general plan, except for Maria's point about middle uh, middle Riverside Drive West going south. And Maria and I have talked about it uh, emotionally and practically. And I would just like to make a compromise position or compromise suggestion to Carissa and her colleagues that maybe the curb is not a parking lane and it becomes an open lane so that there are two lanes with the parking along the embankment. And I suggested this to Maria and she said, no, that's not gonna work. But I still feel that that could be a viable alternative solution. Otherwise, I think we have a really good plan in place. And I'd like to propose that we move ahead with that, uh, except for Maria's concerns and working something out because I realized that there are a lot of elderly along that block. I walked the block, it's not a long block, but still, she and her sister need to get there by, by taxi. I don't think it costs $12 to go around the corner. Maria, I'm very sorry. It doesn't cost $12 to go one mile around the block. I've done it in taxis myself. So that's, that's all I have to say right now. Um. I don't know what else to say. Uh, well, you know, somebody needs to make a motion for there to be a resolution. I make a motion uh, to resolve that we uh, reso this proposal, but we do have to address this concern that uh, an important, a prominent member of our neighborhood and community board has addressed. I don't know what to say about that. Well, if, if I could comment on that, um, you know, the, the community has thousands of people in it, although we do have very prominent residents who advise us and who we take very seriously. Um, one thing we could do um, is approve the whole thing except for the piece that um, Maria objects to. And you know that would be in the resolution. That piece wouldn't be in. And then, since this is essentially all, I believe the section that we're talking about that's in you know un, under contention, in contention, um, is all being done with paint. So that means it can essentially be done at any <clears throat> point in the future. So that's one way of doing it. Just deleting that piece for now, um, and then moving the rest of it forward because I think. 
The rest of it consists of these, these very important improvements that will make everybody else safer. Um, so I, I think I will make that as my emendation of Bruce's suggestion. We just put that piece in abeyance for now because the rest of it is too important to be delayed. Well, you know, my, my concern with that though, is that we, you know, that we don't have a, a plan for how we're gonna contend with that. I mean, because then, I mean, I say this as devil's advocate, we do a resolution on this and people can vote no because they don't like that aspect or they can support the thing. But I, I don't wanna carve it out unless we have, you know, like a plan of like, and then what? And then what's the process to explore that? Then we have to say, oh, right. Then we want a process to explore Okay. I'm what, just what that, can where I, it makes, can it does I, it make sense or not? If we have a process, that's fine, but I don't hear a process for how we're going to deal with like, we want more information so we can decide, like, do we feel no, no. like we can't decide on the one way? Deborah, the, like, otherwise, the process is, Maria, will you accept a compromise of having a two lane south on your block with parking along the embankment so that the bus can go through and that you can go through and you're going to have to go around in a car to get to your apartment. I'm on. I am on here. Yeah. No, I. I this. No, no. I'm sorry. That's not going to work. I'm sorry. Not only is going. You're talking about uh, the the area is a core to begin with. You cannot manage around here with only going south. No matter how you can paint it. Okay. Oh. To make it accessible to the people who live in this area. It's not just Maria Luna, they're very prominent as someone says, I'm not prominent, I'm just a regular person that walks the street of New York. And by consideration to the other people that the rest of the people that live in this area, the, the proposal, the resolution could go forward, leaving that portion without just making that change. It's only a block and a half, it's just one block. It's not going to make that impact, that much impact. And Bruce, it costs about ten dollars because I, I I counted. I just went around to make sure that it hits someone's pocket to go around and around. All so right. I urge, I right. urge. There okay. Is, so do respect. Okay. It Asked and answered. Because we have made amendments and we have made consideration in some resolution, leaving a portion, you know, making a, ch a change, and leaving one portion out without making this big change. I mean, this is very serious. It's not just me that want that. It's the people who reside in this area. I so realize I that. Okay, okay. To do that. All right. And, okay. No, well, stop in there. Um, I see Omar's hand up and, yes. um, and then I, I'm going to have Omar speak. And then Chris, I want to see if you can respond to um, Bruce's suggestion about, can we play with that? lane thing um and okay omar did you have something yeah uh thank you debbie so the 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 topic at hand is the conversion of that two-way to one way correct yeah. and what i saw yeah. in the in the presentation was that a big portion of the safety feature and the traffic control feature of that intersection is that specific conversion so my question is if you make that a two-way then do we have to relook at the study or do we go back to how things work? Because a big part of that change there is that conversion. That conversion stays, goes back to how it was before, how it is today, then you lose the majority of that safety feature. Because if you look at the chart, it flows nicely once that street goes into a one way. And I'm not arguing for or against, or for or against it. What I'm saying is, that the, pro the primary feature of this project is that conversion, really, if you think about it. Yeah, we're, we're doing double and single, converting double and single off Riverside to 158, but the big safety feature is the conversion of the street we're talking about, because you take that out, you kind of take out what all that project is really working on. So that I'm just saying, what is the impact to that study? Is it staying the same? Literally, we stay the same as we are today. It doesn't resolve anything be besides the fact that you do some extensions away from that area. Um, so that's my question to DOT. Take, converting that to, to or remaining as a, as a 
two-way street means that you don't gain the safety features that your project is really banking on, so to say. Um, all right, Chris, so do you wanna just respond to just sort of uh, Omar Singh and, and the sort of, is there room for compromise here? Sure. Um, to Omar's point, yes, you are correct. Um, the conversion does get us the larger concrete curb extension that you saw on the north side of the intersection, which helped to increase pedestrian visibility, um, reduce crossing distance. And then it also took away um, one of the um, confusing and conflicting turns um, at that intersection. Um, as we had discussed, it's a very large complex intersection with a lot of different turns. Um, and so restricting the northbound movement removes one of those turns for vehicles. Um, so yeah, you um, end up losing some of those safety features of that intersection. Um, and so thinking about the compromises that Bruce was mentioning, um, uh, so my understanding, Bruce, is that where there's currently the parking on the west side, that would be the southbound lane, and then you would keep the northbound lane as... No, 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 I'm saying okay. the whole block becomes southbound. You have three lanes, right? You have, right mm -hmm. now, you have parking in two lanes. Along, you're going to move the parking to the embankment side. Okay. And I'm saying free up the curb lane, which you had already recommended with no standing and no parking, blah, 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 intermittently. Mm -hmm. And to enable Maria and, and others who are elderly to get out of their taxi or cars close to the curb so that the bus can go through, because Maria is concerned about the bus blocks and mm -hmm. traffic. You have three lanes to work with. We're going to lose some parking along the curb side but we're going to get it on the embankment side. So just shift the whole, reverse the whole thing. Yeah, we can definitely look into different types of um, loading and um, parking. But it still doesn't um, solve her problem some. about going and having to go around the block and pay an extra $12, which Correct. I still totally disagree with, but that's not for a dispute at this point. Uh, okay. So um, let me just, I'm sorry, I'm just catching up to the Q&A and I think I've lost one of the people that was trying to, oh, actually, um, is it Hisuk um, had a few comments. Can, I've just unmuted, I've, I mean, I've just allowed you to speak. Do you wanna just make those yourself? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I did. Uh, uh, we bought uh, one of the townhouses along the Riverside Drive. 819 Riverside. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, we noticed that corner is really dangerous. And uh, we saw so many near accident you know, situations and so on. I am, we are basically for the idea of changing it to one way. One way. I know it is inconvenient for us to go around and so on, but something has to give. The one big reservation I have is if we have two parking lot uh, on both sides, on the residential, the building side and the, yeah. the, the, the park side, the, the street will become so narrow. So it might actually cause, you know, the traffic uh, jam for the ambulance and so on. So and deliveries and deliveries every day. So, there's yeah. delivery from yeah. FedEx so and so on. If we can just keep the parking space only on the, the house side and not on the park side, then the road will be wide enough. And yes, it is inconvenient. We are 70 years old and uh, we don't like walking too far distance, but uh, we have to live with it. I mean, and, in uh, New York, we have one way street everywhere. So I, I don't see what is yeah. the big problem. And, and also an additional point I would like to make is that in this part of Riverside Drive, the lower part, we get street cleaning once a week. If we are lucky two to three times a month, and if you have double parking, we'll have double the amount of trash yeah, because trash, people yeah. dump stuff from their cars. 
I found so... I find it unbelievable what people do. They put, and we have a fire hydrant close to us, and taxis pull in. They literally dump, dump their, garbage. their garbage and drive off. And yes. we see it on the CTV. C CCTV. CCTV. Yeah, so making it two, two parking spaces. Space, we are talking about two loads of garbage, garbage. dumped on the street, street and the street becoming narrow. So I think the, just uh, one, one one lane as of, it is of, for parking. As it is for parking and and the, yeah. the, the rest just um, so the bus can come through when FedEx stops and delivers the the street won't be blocked as it is then the bus gets stuck behind the FedEx van and traffic coming up and they're all honking away and, and getting yeah, so angry. I think it will solve a lot of problems yeah. and uh, actually we would like to thank you for you know taking care of between 155th uh, all the way to 158. I mean, uh, I can see that it will be so much better, better and yeah. nicer. So, and yeah. one, one final point can we not just put in red light cameras? Everyone jumps those traffic lights at so 158 and speed, Riverside. Speed uh, camera, camera, and or something. camera every corner and really give the tickets, you know, very actively. And then people will learn, you know, at least the people who live yeah. in that neighborhood that they cannot just cross on the red light and so on. Yeah. You know? Well, that's thank our you. input. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate your participation. Um, and I'm just going to read off one more comment that was in our Q&A from a Tekla Szymanski who says, as a resident at 790 Riverside Drive, who has seen the traffic mess in this area up close, it makes sense to go ahead with section A, B, C, and decide on section D later. A to C include very important safety measures that will save lives and should be done sooner rather than later. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that we do what Tekla just said. Um, well, uh, so, meaning, don't I thought you were I thought you wanted to do the motion, but then for the one way conversion to request a compromise that would address the issues and concerns as it relates to people being able to, to have room to pass if there's a bus pulled over or emergency vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, whatever options there are to Maria's concern and our discussion and PSOC, re, uh, let's just resolve that the, the majority of this proposal is, is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. And we're gonna, we're gonna work out the, uh, the, the, the last part of it, which is uh, Middle Riverside Drive South. Right. Um, yes. If I could, which is again, consistent with what Bruce was saying, but not, but I, I think, you know, the only difference is the formality that I'm suggesting. And I want to mention something, you know, in response to what Debbie said. So what I'm suggesting is we do the first three pieces and in the resolution, we say that this fourth piece will continue to be studied because even though the, the fourth piece, which is now under contention, may be a very important part of it, I think the other three pieces will increase the safety of everyone involved despite the fact that the fourth piece is missing now if the rest of it is useless without this fourth piece being resolved that's another story but that is not my impression and you know as i think it was president obama remember him who said you know don't let you know perfection stop you from doing what is possible so right now this committee i think totally agrees with three of the four pieces and unless there's no point in doing them without the fourth one, we should get those first three done. Thank well, you. I, I mean, I guess I would modify because I still feel like. Uh oh, we lost. I, I don't I want I don't want the resolution to study this some more. I think we should say because one, it's OK for us to allow an up or down if people don't like it going to two way at all, I mean, going one way at all, then they need to vote no. 
But I think to say we have concerns about the ability for passing and, and flow of vehicles in the one way and request that you know, the design be amend, amended to reflect those concerns, that's a different thing than saying we're not commenting on it at all. And I guess my preference is for a resolution that says we have concerns about people's ability to pass and then hope that that can, and a request that that be modified, but supports it going to one way. And then that allows, again, people to go up or down on that aspect, but also to reflect our concerns about um, ability for uh, traffic to flow when a bus or an emergency vehicle is pulled over, et cetera. I mean, am I wrong about that? Because I, what I don't want is a resolution that says, we're not going to say anything at all, and then we're, that's going to somewhere in the future. Because well, in that again, I, 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 think, I think Jim said it right. We're going to resolve to the A, B, C, whatever it is, D, and then leave E to further uh, details. Right. The one piece is in contention that we will ask DOT to study further. Again, well, first we need an answer from our good friend, Carissa. Did I get it right? You know, yes. I believe that. Um, the rest of the plan does work, although less ideally without this, this piece that is in contention. Is that correct? Yes. Um, okay. We can, yes, we could move forward with the other pieces. And, and all in all, we would be better off than, than you know, and, and the other thing I want to point out to Debbie is this whole discussion can recur when the, the, the board discusses whatever resolution we come up with and we'll be in the same pickle. So I think, you know, and I think that now Bruce and I see eye to eye on this, this compromise or whatever, you know, we do the pieces we can do that are not in contention and the other one we will continue to work on. And, and you know, maybe there will be a great brainstorm from on high along with the vaccine, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted Thank to you. add from DOT, if I'm allowed to jump in for a second, that I think you're right in pointing out that the benefits at 158 are not as great if we don't include this piece, but also that I think whether it gets included with um, just uh, concerns about uh, making accommodations for the bus and for other um, drop-offs or whether it's a piece that we continue to work on, I think we can make it work either way because we're committed to finding a solution there. That makes sense. Who was that? He suck? Kimberly. No, sorry, Kimberly from DOT. Oh, Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah, you're welcome. No, the point is just that I think it won't drop off if it's not included in this resolution because I think we're committed to um, continuing to work with the residents and with the community to yeah. no, achieve gotta... the best safety benefits we can, but also if, you know, either way. I have to say on behalf of our community and a bunch of people who are somewhere on this call and Vivian and, and others, uh, you guys have done a tremendous job and put a lot of brain power into it. So we have to respect your conclusions and listen to uh, the reaction of the community. So that's what we're doing. And okay. I, I, so I, I, I propose that uh, Jim's proposal be uh, a motion. I second it. Let them make, why don't you second what my what I claim is a motion? I second better. and third it, Jim. We don't do thirds. I know. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, roll call this um, starting with the committee in the order I've got you on my screen. So forgive me for not alphabetical, Bruce. Yes. Jim. Yes. Omar. Yep. Um, Gerard. Yes. Richard Allman. If you could he's just. Mute. He's muted. Richard, can we try again? Yes. Come back to me, please. Okay. Um, I'm voting in favor. Did we ever get Mary? Who? 
Did we get there? She hasn't been able to get in despite all the help she's gotten oh, from Chanel. No. Okay. So this is a real problem because she would like to, you know, be involved. Yeah. And obviously she should get credit for being at the meeting because she tried so valiantly to join us. Can we call her? It was difficult tonight. It was very difficult. It was very difficult. Um, listen, uh, let me just go through our um, the CB12 me uh, members and then Richard Allman, I'm coming back to you. Um, Maria? Yes, one. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Thank, okay, you, great. Um, Thank you, Um Steve Maria. Simon? Um, I, I would vote uh, yes uh, on the uh, on this resolution uh, in the hope that there will be time prior to the implementation when we will be able to uh, uh, further inform the community. Um, Vivian? I'm not sure I'm allowed to vote and Jim could tell you. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Public, I can vote on land use, but I can't vote here. Jim oh, that's right. I should know better, but thank you. That We're is correct. As a member of the public. Um, Curtis, I unmuted you in case you want to vote. Oh, wait. Curtis. He's muted still. Um. Right. Vivian can vote when we ask for the public to vote. Yeah, yeah. And Richard Allman, are you ready to weigh in? Yes. All right. I got a thumbs up. Awesome. For my for or for my doppelganger, I'm not sure. Um, what I'm gonna ask of all of you in the attendee area is I want you to you don't have to vote, but if you want to vote and you're in favor. Just put that hand up. I'm sorry. I'm just um, just catching up. I was on mute. Ah. Is there a Curtis, question for me? Did you did you want to vote on this as a community I, board? I I, I I missed the vote. What what was the vote so far? Um. So far, everybody has voted in favor. Okay. I will vote. I heard your concerns, Maria. Um, were they all addressed? Maria voted in favor. Okay. All right. I will vote. I will vote it's in favor as well. Thank you. When when does the plan when does the plan go? When does it start? Uh, we are still trying to figure out a start date. All right. And uh, then um Kiana, did you have a comment? Could could you let her finish that sentence? <laughs> um, just that with the pandemic, um Things have been shifted a little bit, so we're still trying to figure out um, when implementation can happen. But we're we would like to start with phase one um, sometime this year. Okay, but but not not probably not before the summer. Probably not. Okay. Hello. Yeah, Kiana. Hi. Um. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I was on here early and then I had to jump out because I had another uh, meeting. Um, but um, I just wanted to, I don't know if you guys already spoke about the open spaces, the open streets. Um, we did. Um, can I just, let me just get through this vote and um, that'd be great if you could cover that bef uh, right before we go to the next item. Um, oh, no just, I'm just, I'm, we're almost there. Um, again, anybody on the attendee that, sort of wants to say they support it. Now's the time to put up your hand. Um, all right. I'm just gonna say one thing. Thank you, Lyle. You did a great job in uh, spearheading this uh, effort over the past, it's almost a year now. Oh. Are you still there? A year and a half. He is, yeah. Year he and a half. Is. <laughs> um, okay. Hi, Debbie, can you read out the, the total numbers for committee members that said yes and other board members that said yes? Oh, I was hoping you had the... I, I, I was relying. Had... Um, so everybody, all committee members that are present um, voted in favor. Um, and then from, from CB12, we had Maria and Steve Simon 
and um and Curtis and Curtis and Curtis and um I'm gonna have to not go the have the public it's just it's just too hard with this hand raising on the zoom thing um so let me just see if I've got oh let me just check the Q and A, or Omar, if you can take a look at the Q and A and see if anybody. Ah, Vivian's um, hand is up. Yeah, Tecla's Vivian, hand is up. Vivian has <laughs> hand up. Hi, Deborah. This is Dan Wagner. Can I ask one quick question? the The vote. Can you can you repeat what the vote was for exactly? So, well, the vote is for a resolution um, in favor of the in in support of the proposal. Um, with a carve out on the two way to one way thing for a little further process. Understood. Thank you. Is that a fair? Yeah. All right. So um, thank you. I uh, to all involved. I was uh, great to finally get this presentation, and we are eager to see things get safer over there. Um, as quickly as it can be, because a lot of people have, as you know from your ambassadors and as we have heard of this committee, um, are, have felt in peril. Um, so thank you for that. Lyle, if you can hang in with us, that would be great. Um, do I, do we have people here from, from when? On the BSA? Okay. Mm -hmm. Curtis, um, if you can hear me, can you mute yourself or someone like mute charts. Curtis? Yeah. Um, okay, I did it. I did it. I muted. Sorry. Them. And then um, I'm doing some promoting to panelists. I'm assuming the last two people that raised their hand are some panelists. And just Keanu, well, right, if you can just quickly um, talk about the open streets. We do have a panelist who's been waiting quite some time. So I do want to get them started. But if you if you want to just, I know you've been waiting as well. Um, right. And then, yeah, I promoted you, so you should be able to talk. You just have to unmute yourself. Kiana. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll have to come back to that. Um, so is it an A. Ianati and Amber Cartalian who are here from the Wind Group? Yeah, and I believe you have Kevin yes. Williams as well. Kevin. Uh, but a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. I'm sorry, Kevin Williams. Yeah. Sorry. So just okay. Deborah, uh, Deborah, just to, are we done with the Riverside Drive conversation? We are done with the Riverside Drive. Okay. Many we're gonna, thanks. We're going to say goodbye. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. thanks Bye, Dan Carissa. Carissa. Bye, Dan. Um, Lyle, if you can hang in, do so. <laughs> and. Also, there's um, Tom is part of our team. I don't know if you see Tom in your queue. Is that okay? Got it. Gluck. Yes. Is that right? Yes. All right. One sec. All right. Tom should be up. All right. Um, so if, uh, yeah, if you can guys, you guys can get started. We're here to listen. If you just can introduce yourselves and give as much background as possible, because I don't sure. know, yeah. Okay. How much um, this committee really has a background. I'll begin. My name is Amanda Iannotti. I'm from the law firm of Sheldon Lobel PC. Um, we have filed an application with the Board of Standards and Appeals for a special permit to allow a school, the Wind Charter School, at 506 West 181st Street 
we are requesting the special permit from BSA because a majority of the lot is located within a C83 zoning district where school is not permitted as of right, but is permitted upon a special permit by the BSA. Um, we attended the land use committee meeting in February, I believe. And because this special permit involves findings that have to do with a number of um, environmental analyses and making sure that uh, the school does not negatively impact the neighborhood and that the students are safe um, attending a school here. Um, the land use committee recommended that we also present to um, your committee as well as health and environment um, just to give you guys information about the proposal and to address any of your questions or comments. Um, Tom is the project architect. Um, if you could allow him to share his screen, he can pull up the um, proposed plans and just run through uh, the building with you. Okay. Um, Tom, tape, uh, tell me if you're able to share your screen. Jonathan or Ebenezer, do, do we need to change his status in any way for him to share his screen? Oh, you mean, you, mean, you say Kevin? Uh, Tom Gluck. Um, yeah, Ebenezer. They promoted him to a panelist. I just, yeah. No, um, Ebenezer has to um, make him um, co-host. If Ebenezer, are you hearing it? Yes, I, ju I just made the changes. All right. Thank you, Ebenezer. Okay, and then Tom, when you're, you will just need to do one more unmute on yourself. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, and let me share my screen. Um, okay, can you guys see me as well or see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the project is, is at 506 West 181st Street. Um, and she just, let me just back up a little bit. So that's, whoops, that's between, um, it's right on 181st Street, just off, just west of Amsterdam, between Audubon and Amsterdam. Amsterdam. It's an existing uh, four-story parking garage right now. Um, the school has acquired it and we're in the process of, um, requesting a special use permit for, for its occupancy. Uh, and it'll become, it's a K through five school um, focused um, with a real emphasis on music um, uh, as a way of uh, engaging, uh, getting, educating kids. And all the kids are from, or the priority is given to the local, uh, within the local district. So it's, it's, um, it's not a, uh, the kids are all coming from here or I'll let Charlie talk about it. He's the, uh, but just in terms of what the, you can see in the zoning diagram, the existing building is this hatched area here. Um, that's the existing shape. It's a, it's a four story parking garage. There'll be a small addition on top to enclose one more bit of floor for, for two more sets of classrooms and then a gym on the, on the roof. Um, I think for the purpose of, of this, this may be the slide I leave up, um, and I'm going to let others in the on the team just uh, talk about the the traffic and transportation. But just really quickly, um, as I said, the the music uh, and performance is is really kind of the heart of the mission and program, um, and so that's really a distinguishing feature of the of the building is that there will be a 400 seat um, auditorium on the first floor um, for um, for uh, performances. Um, the rest of the building is fairly straightforward. It has classrooms front and back. Um, and then uh, uh, a setback in the rear is required by zoning and then a gymnasium up on the roof. Um, and I think I'll just quickly go to this section. Um, the existing uh, elevation 
pretty is almost completely intact. There's a setback. So what happens up above the existing profile, if anyone knows the building, is set back. So it'll really become something that's hardly even seen from the street. Uh, and here you can kind of see on the main floor, the theater really taking the bulk of that first floor area. Um, I think that's probably, unless there's more detail on the architectural configuration of the interior, um, I, I probably will turn it over. Um, right, okay. Yeah, obviously for this committee, this is uh, this is helpful background, but we'll be focused on the traffic aspects. <laughs> I mean, there are the streets traffic. Yeah. Um, so does someone else from our team want to take over the, what, Amber or Kevin? Um, yeah, I'm yeah. here, this is Amber, yeah. sorry. Yeah, Amber, go ahead. Kevin. And a team with me, my four-year-old here in the background, so I apologize. Um, so yeah, so we, uh, as Amanda said, as part of the traffic analysis, we're looking at two things. It's reviewed by two different departments, the Department of Transportation, one being uh, traffic engineering and planning, and the other being the DOT School Safety Division. So the analysis, Kevin, can you kind of give a brief introduction why? Yeah, I got it. I got you. So the school is 344 students at full build out. And what we do when we analyze that, just to get right to the point in traffic, is we start with what's called a level one analysis. And a level one analysis is a trip generation, meaning how many students and pedestrians and staff um, are generated. And then by what mode do they arrive? And when we analyze this using Department of Transportation factors, using specific programmatic elements of the existing uh, wind, wind school um, that's, a, that's about a, a three quarters of a mile to the north of this location. And then we also look at the, um, the arrival characteristics, um, the, the Department of Education characteristics associated with the current student body that would transfer here. Um, we developed this model that shows how many people would walk how many people would take public transportation, how many people would take yellow bus, and how many people would get dropped off by parents. And, and basically what this does is per the City of Environmental Quality Review technical manual, is it identifies certain thresholds by which we go through sort of layers of the onion to get to what's called a level two analysis. And a level two analysis is where we assign these trips through specific intersections related to um, the location of the school. And the reason why we do that is then based on those thresholds, it determines whether we need to do what's called a level of service analysis, which evaluates the existing traffic, um, both pedestrian and vehicular and bus um, in the service area to determine whether or not an impact will result from the proposed project. And so what those results showed is that they, the project does not generate enough vehicular traffic to require a level of service vehicular analysis. So we do not pass what's called 50 cars at any one intersection. And so we're very aware that this is a very busy thoroughfare that 181st you know, and Amsterdam and Audubon is, you know, it's a, you know, the 181st corridor is a busy corridor and we, we understand this. Um, but it, so the primary mode of arrival is via pedestrian and, and that, that means both, um, and, and then yellow bus. Uh, and I, I wanna kind of explain the only area where we where based on our analysis that we're required to do what's called level service analysis is for pedestrian trips. And what triggers a detail level analysis for pedestrian trips is 200 pedestrian trips through any particular intersection. And just so you know what those include, based on DOT criteria, Every K through five student is required to have a caregiver assigned to each student. So the fact is that for every student, you have a companion caregiver with them at the same time. So that, um, you know, not in, in all instances, that may not actually be the case, but it's generally the case. And that's how we evaluate traffic. So it's, it's on a very conservative basis. And so um, what where we're at right now with the, the study is, 
that we've evaluated both high crash and accident intersections. We've evaluated this generation. We've looked at the assignment of trips, pedestrian, bus, uh, MTA transit, and yellow school bus. And we've developed a protocol to sort of safely arrive and depart students from the location. And we are now waiting for DOT to come back and concur with our assessment on the pedestrian intersections to, to evaluate. And those are basically Amsterdam and Autobahn and the 181st corridor, where we would be looking at the existing pedestrian volumes, the existing traffic volumes, and determine whether or not the sidewalks and the signalization that's that's present there are are um, are are enough to accommodate the volumes proposed by the school. Um, and so that's kind of generally what we've done so far um, to date. Um, and in terms of the proposed drop off locations, this, this is one of the things that I think that the, that the board might be uh, interested in. So because Autobahn is a le less trafficked intersection um, and that there's a dedicated bus lane on 181st Street running in front of the proposed school location, uh, we have um, alternatively provided two optional locations. One is a, uh, a bus lane on Autobahn before the right turn. And the benefit of this is it, it keeps uh, to, and there's only a handful of buses, uh, by the way, that are proposed. It's not like this five or six. So we're talking two or three buses to accommodate the school population that will be arriving by yellow bus. And so in order to prevent impact to the bus lane, we put it forward into the travel lane so that buses could maneuver around and still access the, the um, bus stop. And alternatively, on the less trafficked, and less accident prone Autobahn uh, right of way. Uh, one of the things that I do wanna note is that there's a 180 car parking garage that's present on this street. And one of the questions that the board presented us to the at the land use subcommittee was, well, can the neighborhood support the loss of this parking garage? And so there's three parking garages proximate within you know, a, a, a two to five minute walk from this location where there's excess capacity. And one of the reasons why the current owner of this site is looking to you know, have the building um, you know, retrofitted and rehab to a school is because the, the parking garage as it stands is only approximately 50% capacity. But when you think about that reduction in vehicular movements into the garage, which is 75 uh, cars approximately during the peak hour versus um, what is less than 50 cars along the 181st Street uh, uh, frontage, we're actually, by removing the parking garage, we're actually removing vehicular, we're reducing vehicular traffic that would actually be entering into the garage. So that's one thing that I wanted to point out and it's important to note. And basically the, the other area garages are distributed in three different locations, which is supplied in the environmental assessment. Um, but that's basically our preliminary analysis. We did not trigger any significant red flags. We're slightly over the, the pedestrian thresholds. And so the idea now is we sort of evaluate how many pedestrians are arriving on the sidewalk, whether the sidewalks can accommodate them and whether they can be safely fostered into the, into the school location. And based on the current existing volumes of pedestrian movements at the AM arrival time, which is usually, you know, maybe 30, 30 to 45 minutes prior to the normal commercial peak in the morning. And then of course at three o'clock and the three to 3.30 in the afternoon is usually 30 to 45 minutes before what is the start of the PM peak. The school is a little bit offset from traditional peaks. So the cumulative impact that would result from say a commercial use in this location uh, or a parking use is greatly diminished in terms of arrivals and departures. Um, so that that's kind of a summary. I don't know, Amber, if you wanted to add anything to that or um, whether you're even available. <laughs> so that's that's kind of the summary presentation. And I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions related to them. To, to um, details or our questions on school operations or traffic in general. Okay. Can I ask, can I ask a question? But, uh, before before we get to that, if just Tom could unshare the screen so we 
I can, we can get a little bit more visibility. I pr thank you so much. Um, question after Bruce Deb. I've had my hand up the whole time. Oh. Who, who's that, Omar? Yeah. Go ahead, Omar. Yeah, I no defer. worries, thanks Bruce. I defer. <laughs> Um, I have two questions because I am, I was on, well, I'm on land use committee. So I saw this presentation before and I just want to put, I just want a point of clarification first before my next point from the presenters. Um, was it noted that this school is moving from an existing location currently within district six to its potential new location? And can you share the location of the existing uh, school location? Yeah, the, so the, the, the school is currently housed at MS328 building on 401 West 144, 164th Street. Yeah. Great. And it has a, an enrollment of 145K through second grade students. Thank you. Um, the second point that I wanted to make about this is that, as we all know, 181st Street, extremely heavily trafficked area. I mean, if you yep. go up and down it at any given point, um, it's just, it's almost a gridlock, sort of say. And I just want to put it out there for us to side on the area of caution, because we saw what happened on Fort Washington, where Mother Cabrini was converted from a high school to an elementary school with a charter school. And the traffic issues that we continue to have up there, and mind you, Fort Washington had nowhere near the amount of traffic that 181st Street has. So I just want everyone to kind of be aware of what could possibly happen when shifting an elementary school into 181st Street. And I understand that there's studies still that need to be finalized by DLT, which I'd be interested to see what DLT says in regards to that, because as you shift students from their 164th Street location, up to 181st Street, one can say that there were local students to 164, they were walking to 164, but as you shift them to 181, especially elementary school kids, that's a much further distance that you can't expect those kids to walk. So as we saw happen on Fort Washington, is that yes, you, you might have kids that all live in the area and could potentially walk to the school, but what Fort Washington has experienced with their students is that local kids are actually being dropped off by cab as well not just buses. So I just, I'm putting it out there as a statement for our committee to keep in mind when thinking about this project and the potential impacts that it can have on 181st Street, as well yeah, as um, having a five right across oh, the street. Omar, Omar, can I respond to that? Because that's a really um, excellent point and something that is certainly taken into account. Um, the one thing I did want to address, and, and I think it's a normal, would be a normal assumption is that the current school location necessarily has local students. And insofar as that's true, um, because this is a specialty school, um, it draws from a broader area. And one of the things that we've done uh, in the course of doing our traffic analysis is kind of looked at a multi-level way of considering the school. One is we did what's called, we geocoded the addresses or the zip codes of the students, student body to currently identify where they're coming from. Then we analyzed the shift as the school moved its location and the available student body um, that would be coming from the district uh, you know, off of our experience from other locations. And um, one of the things that DOT will look at is they will look at our, um, look at our uh, arrival assumptions, uh, meaning our, you know, the geographic distribution of students and their parents, and also our assumptions on reassignment, reassigning the way that children and their parents arrive, and they will determine whether or not that that's a, those are correct assumptions. But given that the school has a broader mandate, uh, and it, it, there's also a special needs component, minor special needs component, but that it provides a unique curriculum you know, we're drawing from a larger uh, range, um, you know, perhaps not citywide, but one that would take a normal pro rata share of public transportation, yellow bus share, uh, as well as, um, you know, some of the student body that had been going to the previous location actually lived closer to this location. And so all of that is summarized in the report. 
and will have to be the veracity of that will have to be determined by DOT, determine whether or not the amount of vehicular traffic that's produced here um, would actually trigger a detailed level of service analysis. We're certainly prepared to do that. Um, one of the main things that we're very mindful of though is to you know, use the block characteristics of this location and be mindful that 181st is a transit throughway um, and to, tr to attempt to avoid bus drop-offs you know, in front of the school. And to also, we, one of the things that we did is also look at the current operation and see how many parents dropped off their students, how many cab drop-offs there were along with our normal models that we utilized. And so, you know, one of the things that we found is, is actually the drop-off rate and the cab drop-off rate is, is relatively modest. It still exists and we still have to accommodate it, but definitely, Omar, I think all of those concerns were looked at and particularly mindful knowing that knowing the busyness of this corridor. But the one thing that I wanted to note, and it's not necessarily diminish the points that you make at all, but the the arrival and departure time here, 7:30 a.m. to 7:50, you know, is is kind of the window. Um, so, and generally, you know, the traditional peak arrival period, you know, 8 to 8:30 is when you're um, you know, your sort of worst case AM. So that uh, I think, you know, we have maybe 20% lower traffic volumes then. And it's something that um, that we'll, we'll look at and compare because we, you know, we have that data on 181st, the DOT has it. So, you know, that's one sort of saving grace of putting a location like this, as opposed to a, a parking garage that would closely track the, you know, the commercial and the office and the ambient uses in the area. So I, that, I just wanted to kind of follow that because Omar, I, I heard you that at our last hearing and that we need to be very clear on our model for um, evaluating how students arrive and depart. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I have, I believe Bruce, Jim, Gerard, although I have no clue about the order, um, I, uh, Jim, you want to go, Jim? Okay. <clears throat> um, I think it was very um, wise to make the bus drop-off point on Audubon Avenue. Um, I think the answer to my question is going to be yes, but I presume the, the, the children are going to be escorted from the drop-off point to the entrance to the school. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. And yeah. the other thing is you might, and, and you know, because there is the issue that was brought up um, just recently about the, 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 the large number of cab drop-offs that happened at this other school, you could probably insist that the cabs be dropped, that the children that come by cab also be dropped off in that same drop-off area. Absolutely. Yeah, because the, we would certainly the, we would certainly right. provide guidance. This is something that we, we have discussed with the operators of the charter um, and the developer about providing clear protocols for parents uh, in terms of where they drop off or directing them to garages or directing it, them to areas yeah. with the least amount of traffic. And that also goes for cab operators and the children that would be dropped off by cabs or parents that would drop off their children by cab and then go to their destination. So this is absolutely believe, in our protocol. I believe there's a bus stop pretty much, a, a, a eastbound bus stop sort of in front of where the school is. And right that, in front that of is the for, school. That is always a mob scene. So that's yeah. why you're gonna need the escorts and stuff. And that's why you certainly don't want any extra cabs there. This and, is why we avoided Amsterdam is because Amber observed the queue of of people waiting to take the bus um and and yeah autobahn was much much better we observed it for three hours in the morning and three hours in the afternoon and it worked much much better okay um thank you um bruce or gerard who's up next <laughs> oh bruce you're on you're on mute Excuse me. You guys have really nailed down a lot of the traffic stuff, so thank you. Uh, it looks like 2420 Amsterdam next door to you is a vacant lot that's going to go commercial building. 
Is that going to yeah. have? They're is that going to have, any, now. Yeah, going to have yeah. any impact on your traffic? And then across the street is a fire department, which, you know, intermittent uh, calls and so forth. I'm sure you've taken all that into consideration. So, yeah, um, Bruce, good question. So two things, um, you know, so my colleague Amber, who, who re really put in the vigor in putting together the environmental assessment, it's really one of the city's premier experts in doing environmental assessments for charters. She, she actually evaluated and interviewed the fire department, uh, evaluated their operations all day. We actually collected noise readings while sirens were going off. Um, they, they actually had folks in the street who steward um, at any time they have a bell alarm. Um, they have individuals in the street who, uh, who, who uh, you know, steward uh, the, the movement of um, the fire engines in and out of their facility. In addition, um, you know, we, the charter would coordinate with the fire department um, to make sure that best practices during arrival and departure, dismissal and arrival of students, that if there were a fire uh, alarm going off during those times that students would be held and you know, so we would have a protocol in place to make sure that there's that there is no problem. Um, in addition, we looked at the activity at the fire engine location here in terms of number of accident responses per year. Um, you know, and it, it you know ranged about three a month. So it's relatively minor. Having said that, you know, we are aware in an urban environment that there has to be proper communication, proper coordination. And, and it would be a shared responsibility to make a safe street. So I think the fire department's actually gonna be a very good neighbor and they do a good job of stewarding their engines in and out. And you know the folks that manage the school and the, the student uh, the, the uh, student teacher um, uh, safety personnel who will be placed on the street during arrival and departure will be a no folks on a first name basis at the fire department. Um, so, and then in terms of the commercial building that's next door, um, you know, we looked very closely at it. We had to model a lot of different things, um, air quality, student noise, you know, it was mostly impacts of our operation on, on that building. Um, you know, the way that we look at it, at that use is it's a modern use. It has identifiable in inputs and egresses in so far as it does not have extra curb cuts it does not pose a major concern to us. Having said that, one of the major reasons why we decided to relocate arrival and departure node at, at um, Autobond is because we didn't want uh, children potentially interacting with volumes of pedestrian traffic that may be coming in and out of that building. Um, but having said that, it's a very large building um, and it you know it's something that we'll have to make sure that we are good neighbors with and, and make sure that we communicate with them and understand yeah. how they operate. But I think, again, this is, you know, we sort of start before they start. We sort of leave before they leave in yeah. terms of peaks. So and, I, and, I think that will be- uh, Kevin, Kevin, is it under development? And, and obviously- it, it is, you know, so there, there's foundations go, going yeah. up and, right now. And it's totally Kevin, commercial. If Amber, go ahead. It, it's a it's a mixed use building, so it's a combination of uh, ground floor retail, commercial offices, um, and then there's a small portion that has a uh, event space on the upper floors, uh, as well as uh, I believe hotel use. You know, um, the develop, who's the developer? I don't know off the top of my head, but I. Bruce, okay. this is the one, the CB12 has had this presented a number of times. I think yeah. the last name is you, Y-O-O. This is the one at the corner where the gas station was. So that's- yeah. that Oh, big. I'm sorry, and, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Young, young yeah, Woo. Young Woo. And, and to, yeah. to add to what Kevin was saying, we, we basically, you know, from a, a safety standpoint, at least, um, a lot of, there's a number of curb cuts around that whole segment fronting both 181st and Amsterdam that would actually be restored and, and replaced at full sidewalk curb height. And there's, uh, you know, the primary access for this building is actually on 180th Street, 
um, to the rear and there's one single point of entry and exit for a parking garage, as well as one yeah. small entry point for um, the loading and unloading of goods. Uh, and that's not along the primary route of travel for students. It would actually be further out of their way to travel down that corridor unless they lived on that block front and were walking past that every day. So we did, we looked at that closely. Thank you. Yeah, that has to be included in our build scenario of evaluation. Um, so it's, you know, it's definitely been looked at, um, you know, particularly the hotel uses that are present there are, are, you know, off peak compared to normal commercial traffic and compared to our arrival and departure times to some degree. Okay. I'm Thank good. you. Um, Gerard Dangle, I think you've been waiting. Yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for the presentation. And um, it sounds relatively benign, which really makes me think we have to ask a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> I'll step back to Omar. Very ably answer those questions. I would suggest Debbie and committee that we seriously, I mean, if we weren't in this crisis, I would say something like this proposal would merit maybe even a town hall for the, for the area. We'd want to create some space for people that have experienced what, what they experience every day on Cabrini, could share their experience in a space with people that live in the area where this is being proposed. Um, I think I really think it would serve the community well to 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 provide some type of town hall because this is a significant. It's going to put pressure on that area, 181st Street, for everything everybody just said. Possibly the business committee and the business community should be consulted. Again, I don't know what this impact is, but that is an area of stress on so many levels that really did not give the community a space and a forum and its own meeting to, to let everybody come and voice their opinions and concerns, and especially with Cabrini, what Washington experience, what they could share with people in that area. I think it'd be a missed opportunity. They, they definitely will. They have full community board hearings That's open to the public. Um, no, no, I said, yeah, I you know, I, I'm in a town hall. I mean, we, we, a, a town hall, we have had them passed for, for things that can be impactful to where So it, was that a presenter that said that? I know that a general meeting is coming up. I understand that. I'm saying. Well, let me ask you to the, to the board. I think you make a good question, uh, Gerard. I, I, you know, I think I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm all, all for a good community meeting. And particularly the question I have is, was there a community board meeting for the, the hotel on Amsterdam and 180? Uh, there was. Well, yeah, there was a big presentation, although my recollection is that the, I mean, I think they were there a few times and, but my, if memory serves, it was done at general meetings and elsewhere, but let's just put aside, let, let's just split the issues because I think that the process of you guys in the BSA, I'm presuming is led by, um, the land use is in the first position and then the rest of us are plugging in with these individual meetings. But, um, and then Jim, I, I see you and I'm coming back to you. I would say um, you're obviously hearing a lot of concerns based on issues that we've dealt with, with um, Success Academy, Washington Heights. What the, what the situation there was a lot of out of district people, a lot of not walking distance people and including seeing out of state plates. So we have a lot of sensitivity because that really turned into a significant issue. So just to sort of build on Gerard's, uh, Gerard's point for a moment, I know in the, just to sort of put some specificity around what we're sort of interrogating is that by my reading, um, and I understand your process and the level one analysis sorta, is that you're saying, it's 46 private cars and seven Ubers, taxi kind of things projected in, this, in the peak school arrival. And I know that from what you were saying, what, what sort of underlies those that 46 and seven um, arriving on Audubon 
is knowing where your existing students are and then making a projection about right. as you build the grades what that comes out to so i i guess what i'm saying is we will be very focused on understanding like what's what's the possible like variance on that like if we're off how far and just understanding where that came from but i'm just sort of putting that out there of like people obviously you've heard from omar and gerard and this is a big concern but i just want to say to omar and gerard what we're talking about is in their current proposal it's 46 private cars and seven taxis in the estimate given their 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 analysis um jim let me go to you because that, that mine was a little not that's something to be answered, just putting it out there. Uh, Jim, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, one thing I did want to say, uh, Deborah, just since, since Kevin, again, quickly, you know, I mean, I don't want to diminish, I, I'm very glad to hear what your concerns are about Success Academy. I did want to note that that, that has about 220 more students than, than, our, than our location, um, uh, the size of our use. Um, ha having said that, you know, I think, um, that Tom and um, you know members of the school actually can speak to the locality, and it's also in our proposal. But I, I think that's one thing you should have comfort on that you, you know you're not going to have uh, you know folks coming from far flung areas in New Jersey. That this is a school that primarily serves its local school district. Um, so you know, if, if I may continue with the floor yeah. now that I am yeah. unmuted, um, two things in the. It's my recollection that the building on the corner, which had been a shell station, um, is going to be a relatively classy hotel. And then the plans they presented to the board and the land use committee um, were very detailed. And part of this was because they either needed a variance or so, some other action because part of their site was in the wrong kind of district also. So we're, you know, they did come before us. And, and the other thing I, I wanna mention is that um, the area by the Success Academy is, a, is a, a residential area with one very narrow street that runs back and forth for Washington Avenue. And it's in no position to handle much traffic at all, basically. And, and even now that they've closed the road in the park, that's, that's almost a dead end and people have to turn around. So when all sorts of vehicular traffic and buses and heaven knows what came to that area, it was just chaos. Because like I said, it's sort of a cul-de-sac like thing. And there's also a bus route that goes up and down. So that was a whole mess. Now, Fort Washington is much more, I'm not sorry, 181st Street is much more of a commercial corridor. The street is much wider. So, and, and you know, as Gerard points out, there are businesses along 181st Street, certainly in that block. And in fact, most of what's on that block is business. And insofar as, you know, and you know, this is my view, your peak doesn't correspond to theirs. I think, you know, there, there should not be much of a problem, but I, I don't expect the same sort of um, situation to occur merely because, you know, your school is on this normal grid of streets as opposed to this narrow spit of high ground where you know, there are actually just two northbound streets where the success, success academy is. Right. So I think it, it, it won't, you know, your school should not have a particularly damaging impact, I don't believe. And if this is, Tom Gluck, if I can, um, oops, sorry, hold on one second. If I can just um, share uh, the, uh, the, the executive director is, he's actually an attendee. He's not on the panel list, um, Charlie Ortiz, but I probably can speak a little bit for him, maybe not quite as eloquently, but when, when school is Washington Heights and Inwood community music charter school. And so it, the way admissions works is that it's a lottery system prioritized first for kids within that district. Um, so to the extent that there is available space, it goes further afield, but there's no um, uh, interview process or there's no uh, uh, audition process. Um, so it really is designed to, to serve the kids within, sure, the greater neighborhood, um, Washington Inwood Heights, but not far afield, just to, to the point Kevin was making a minute ago. Thank you, Tom. 
Um, I'm just uh, Richard. We have Richard Allman, and then I'm going to go to Steve Simon if that's it for the TNT committee. So going to Richard, and then um, if we do have any questions that are pointed towards the executive director, Mr. Ortiz, I have um, put him in a position to respond if need be. Now, um, before we go, I, I also had mentioned the business committee. Again, I know this isn't a, it's not a big thing, but again, you know, given the current condition where businesses are so under stress, you know, it's a, it's an, I think it's just a, it's, it's probably a very nice thing to do to reach out to business community just to kind of let them know. Um, again, those businesses are under tremendous stress. Maybe it's good for them. Maybe they just like to hear about it. So that was all I had to say. Yeah, that's a great uh, idea. Yeah, it went to a lot of committees, but I'm not sure it did with that one, Gerard. So I will check with Eli on, and Domingo on that. Um, thank you. Richard Allman? Um, I have a two-part question. And the first part builds on Mr. Dengel's comments just now, which is what has, I mean, this is a busy business corridor. There is an in addition to what the community board can do, there is an active and thoughtful merchants group, active, well-organized and thoughtful merchants group. So the first question is just, what have been the interactions with business people in the area so far, both through, clearly not through the community board, but has there been anything else? Second part of the question has to do with the proposed loading zone on Audubon. I believe there are some substantial uses on Audubon, which are going to be impacted by the creation of an additional loading zone there. And I wonder what attention has been paid to that so far. Yeah, I, I can address if, if it's okay. Um, so we looked at uh, when, so there's a checks cashed store and a, and a, and a pharmacy. Um, that are located there. The checks cash store is uh, open 24 hours, but- Meaning on um, Audubon? Yeah, on Audubon. Um, so there's a Sky Wireless store there as well um, currently. Um, those uses, so the, the pharmacy doesn't open until um, eight o'clock in the morning. The check cash store, as I said, is open, you know, 20, 24 hours, but the, the foot traffic there is relatively modest. And we're basically talking about a 30 to, to 40 minute window um, at from seven to 7.30 at, you know, 7.40 in the morning uh, at, at the max. So the afternoon overall- Afternoon also? At, uh, I'm sorry, Richard. Afternoon also? Uh, at three, yes, yeah, three, three to 3.40, so, you know, 3.15 to 3.45 approximately. So the- the, the period of impact that we would have a school no standing uh, would be re would be relatively modest um, in these areas and and I don't think impact um, you know during major periods but what we could do to allay your concerns and it's part of our data collection process is to just you know prove that with um, some field information um, on on the, the uses that are present there um, there's currently, um, on street parking, you know, in those locations. And, and obviously as the day rolls out, um, you know, those are utilized, utilized pretty heavily. There's also been some construction there in the past at 516 West 181st Street, which has sort of um, altered the traffic patterns there that sort of been concluded to fit out of that building. Um, and, and so- Well, that building is gonna be occupied. I'm sorry, Richard, say it again. That building is going to be occupied. Right, at 181st, yeah, on 516 uh, West 181st, there's a small, you know, about a 20 foot wide lot that's been developed there or improved with a, with a two story office building. Um, it's, you know, it's the same level as everything else that's there. That's pretty like low scale. Um, so, like, but like I said, you know, yes, it would be occupying um, approximately three, you know, parking spaces that are, or that are on the corner there. Um, you know, it's, it's believed that those would basically be taken, you know, during, during periods that aren't particularly peak. Um, and, you know, based on our surveillance of the neighborhood, you know, basically the best safest location to get students down the, down the block, 
and to, to get the buses unloaded and departed in, in what is a, you know, the most benign area here, um, you know, in terms of the, the neighborhood. So, but yeah, I think um, in terms of, you know, backing up this claim, you know, we can provide video in the morning, snapshots, you know, show what the hours are, folks going in and out, but it's really very quiet at, at 7.30 in the morning um, on that corner um, based on our observations a couple of times, so. All right, thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah. Let me, I'm gonna go to um, Steve Simon. We are gonna try to start wrapping this up. I know it's been a long night for everybody and it's certainly a long night to be doing it on Zoom. Um, <laughs> Steve, uh, wait, I, Steve, I think I have to, you can probably speak now, <laughs> Steve. All right, uh, I have a, a quick comment and then two questions. Uh, first of all, I don't feel as though this situation is analogous to uh, the Success Academy on uh, Fort Washington Avenue, because I think as the point has been made, this is a school which draws primarily from uh, our community, uh, whereas uh, the Success Academy uh, does not. And uh, you know, those kids are coming from outside of our area and, uh, and are therefore being transported to the school uh, by, uh, by private cars for the most part or taxis. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be the case. Uh, in this, uh, with this school. Uh, my, my first question is um, um, the uh, bus stop, uh, which is in front of the, uh, uh, the parking garage or what will become the school, uh, do, does it uh, extend to the Amsterdam Avenue corner? Uh, so it's striped, um, particularly, the lane has recently been striped and it runs just, it runs the whole 181st Street corridor. Yeah. No, no, right. I'm, no, I, no I, I'm not talking about the bus lane, but uh, there's a bus stop. Uh, oh, that's it. Yeah, so the stop is only uh, so directly, pretty much directly in front of our, um, a little bit in front of our site. Well, why don't we have it move to the corner? Why, why, why should it be in front of the school? Shouldn't it be over on Amsterdam Avenue? Mm -hmm. So m maybe, uh, probably not necessarily because of our of our use but because of the hotel next door i mean because you you know we've seen the queue there you know it runs to the light pole um there is a bus stop though already on um amsterdam around the corner as well no i know um, but but it seems to me the on 181st street since the gas station is no, no longer there which may have precluded having the bus stop over on the corner to me, it makes more sense to have the bus stop but moved away from the entrance to the school. So right. I tell you what, Steve, that's music to my ears. You know, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, yeah. let me interject here. If Let's, it's possible. I'm, I'm going to parking lot the issue of what's happening to that bus stop with the new building, et cetera, because yeah. that's a bigger thing. That's a DOT thing. It's a bigger I don't thing. want it. It's 930. Let's, Steve, why don't you go to your next question? Yeah. Well, I think it's something we should be looking into. Uh, my my second point. question is: uh, You mentioned earlier that there are uh, uh, that there's maybe no need for this parking garage because there are three others in the immediate community, and um, and sorry? in the hotel, by the way. Well, the, well, I I don't know if is that one going to be open to the general public? It is open to the general public. Okay, but are, are you counting as one of those garages? Uh, there's one I think on 179th Street in Audubon, which is being uh, uh, con converted into a, sh a women's shelter. So I, I hope you're not counting on that. One. Uh, hold on. Well, I would just say, even if so, I'm, I'm pulling it up, pulling up my graphic on the parking. Okay, even, well, even with that, we found, you know, a significant excess when we interviewed each parking garage. So okay. All right, that would certainly just, have to be something we double check. Um, yeah, I would, I would just ask you to double check that point. Yes. And uh, with, with the recommendations that have been made about meeting with the business community, uh, um, Cedro Medina, who is the executive director of the, uh, the 181st Street Business Improvement District, is probably a good uh, resource for you. And I would, uh, he's also a member of the community board. And I would uh, recommend that you also meet with him. Um, Sir, what was his last name? Uh, Medina, Isidro uh, Medina. Okay. Uh, uh, it's the Washington Heights bid. Yes, the Washington Heights 181st Street uh, Business Improvement District. 
uh, you should definitely have a separate me meeting and introduce yourself uh, to him. Um, he should be able to he should be able to introduce you to uh, the neighboring businesses. And uh, is the the woman who's who's on the call from uh, Sheldon Lobel, uh, I'm sorry, is that Linda? No, uh, Amanda. Amanda. Yes. Um, all right. So um, I I don't know if I'm. Uh, I don't know if I, I'm the chair of the Health Co and Environment Committee, so I think I'm okay. supposed to be a, a, arranging a, a similar presentation for my meeting on Thursday. Uh, so I, I guess I'll be reaching out to you. Uh, yes, tomorrow. please. Um, okay. So you said Thursday. I, I thought it was Wednesday. No, no Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Uh, are you available? Are you available? Um, yes, I believe we are, Kevin. All right. Amber. You guys, you guys connect offline. Okay. Very good. Um, or, you know, tell me if you- Deborah, Deborah, just quickly, just to respond to Steve's question very quickly, 182nd Street parking lot has 30 spaces, Audubon Avenue parking lot at 284, 138, 249 Amsterdam, Amsterdam Avenue, 140 spaces. So I don't think we're at, at uh, any of those. Um, okay, thank you. Um, uh, could, Omar Tejana, did you, is this a new hand raise? And if so, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, it was just to make a, no, a comment that I made at um, land use and I'll make here that I should have done right away at the beginning, which is why I said I'm neither um, neutral on this topic for against, I was really just speaking to the traffic issue, is that I just wanted to note again that I do work for the public um, New York City Department of Education, and I just wanted that on the record. Got it. Um, thank you, Omar. All right. Um, let me just check our attendees. Um, all right, if this has been a long night gang, if, um, if nobody has any more questions, I will just, um, I think I will want to thank Tom, Amanda, Amber, mm -hmm. and thank you, Mr. Ortiz for being here. And I feel like I'm missing somebody. Um, we talked a little bit about I mean, we talked about, you mentioned there's like video and pictures we can see to get um, more of a sense of some of these uh, concern areas. And I think, I know this is gonna be a process and we'll all get to talk again. So we'll look forward to, um, you know, your presentations on the broader environment. And then as you have additional information, again, that just helps us to really understand the issues on, um, you know, particularly around that estimated uh, car drop off in particular, we will be eager to see it. Um, so just, and thank you for hanging in tonight. I know you had to wait a long time to present. Um, and I guess I would say to the committee, I know, um, yeah, I'm, I guess, maybe a little fried to go through old business and new business, but Richard Allman just wanted to raise one thing uh, to maybe consider for the June meeting related to the MTA issues that I opened with, you know, on the new cleaning schedule, et cetera. So Richard, do you want to just, you know, briefly unmute yourself and just give us an overview of what your thought was or something we might want to spend a little more time on next month? I missed the cleaning discussion at the beginning. Oh, but no, I was just announcing that yeah. May, that Wednesday can, started the new regime. <laughs> um, new regime is is the issue here. It's clear simply from what I read in public on blogs, media, et cetera, that MTA is going to be proposing a lot of substantial changes in response to COVID. Some will relate to cleaning, some will relate to other things. We've already, in the changes that they're trying to go through at this point, we, last month we faced some excess issues. What I would propose is simply that in June, we put some substantial time on the agenda to start with a brainstorming discussion and move towards recommendations, concerns, et cetera, that we may have. Um. Thanks, Richard. And I think that makes sense, you know, particularly because there have been different changes, et cetera. So it'll give us an opportunity to sort of see what's working, where gaps might exist. So I appreciate you bringing that. Um, also appreciate everybody else that's been raised issues. I did bring it back to MTA, you know, 
Gerard has talked about this as well. Um, and as, as people might have been reading, there have been particular issues at the end of the line, which is certainly the case with our A-Train and, and CB12. Um, so uh, I will also just remind people on the agenda next month is um, the city bike presentation. Um, so that is on the June agenda. So those would be the two things that we that we have. Um, and then I guess before we close, um, Lyle, I just want to call on Lyle because at a point we had, you know, we talked about him doing a little update on what was happening over at Riverside Viaduct, but I think this has turned in, a, you know, not sure we want to so much get into that, but Lyle, do you want to just, anything you want to update us on or briefly mention? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I was able to uh, talk to our Bridges Division to see if they can give uh, more or less an update as to where we are what's been done, that sort of a thing. Um, so I can try to do this fairly quickly <laughs> as far as pretty much where you stand with the work. Um, just to advise, uh, the work in the pre-stage area started already and all the demolition has been complete. Uh, the removal of the steel beams was completed on March 3rd and the steel erection will begin on Riverside Drive West starting this week, May 4th. Um, there's been installation of a new fire hydrant that was completed last Tuesday, the 28th. Uh, the current location of that hydrant is about 30 to 50 feet away from the main entrance of uh, River Arts. Uh, the form work uh, started on April 27th. Uh, the form work is a mold made out of timber uh, into which the concrete is poured to create a form. So, um, you know, currently we're moving forward you know, with this project overall, you know, it's, you know, considered, you know, essential work for the time being. Um, the erection of the seal and other activities requires the partial closure of one or two lanes adjacent to the work zone. Uh, the hours of operation will be from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Uh, there'll be one northbound lane clo uh, closed and two southbound lanes. Um, or it'll be the closure of two northbound lanes. Or, yeah, and one north. Wait, it's so one northbound lane and two southbound lanes, or the closure of two no northbound lanes, or one of each. Um, there might be different variations of the closures, but there should be uh, traffic that's able to flow um, along the viaduct area in the meantime. Um, that situation is uh, set to end around uh, the 22nd of May. It started. Uh, this past Thursday, April 30th, and it should be going on for the next couple of weeks. Um, in regards to the under deck by 158th Street, so pretty much a little overpass underneath uh, demolition uh, of the soffit, which is a thin layer of concrete underneath the overpass. I think they're doing some work around there a week before last, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is complete. Uh, the blasting and painting of the beams is still in progress and the contractor is still in process of applying the last coat of paint. Um, we've been working with Amtrak uh, in the middle of all of this um, as they uh, own that property, uh, essentially have a space between uh, the ramp uh, for the parkway and the viaduct spaces have the train track right there. Um, the installation of the shielding and painting work underneath the cantilever section, so that overhang essentially uh, above the Amtrak rail is scheduled to begin uh, today, May 4th. Uh, between the hours of nine and five overnight. So it would be an overnight, uh, be overnight work. So essentially as we speak, uh, there should be some work going on there. Um, the stone repair on the west sidewalk uh, parapet between West 155th and 160, uh, 161st streets is 95% uh, complete. And finally, just uh, a point of note, um, in regards, you know, in light of uh, our current situation, you know, with the pandemic, uh, there have been no delays to construction and there have been no cases of COVID-19 reported by any of the contractors, any of the construction crews. So if there are any concerns as far as social distancing, you know, any sort of work that's going on there, uh, as of now, there are no worries. Um, everything should be 
in place as far as any measures. Um, and we should be on schedule as far as the timeline. Uh, again, subject to change, uh, barring any sort of new developments, um, you know, with the current situation that we're in. Um, I did want to point out um, that, you know, we do have a liaison on site, a uh, community construction liaison. Uh, her name is Valerie. Um, she's on site um, pretty much every day. I'm not sure if she's still there given the current conditions, but um, I know that, you know, at the uh, field office on 158th and Broadway, um, you know, she is there. Um, she can be contacted, you know, she's still, you know, working, you know, we're still, again, everything is still business as usual for us. Um, so she can be reached. And I'm not sure if, uh, you know, any members of the committee um, get uh, our newsletters. Uh, Valerie sends out a newsletter usually every week um, to all stakeholders, the residents, the electeds, um, et cetera, just letting, you know, everyone in the area know, including the community board, uh, you know, what the most recent work is that's going on, you know, for a given one to two week look ahead. Um, and, you know, you can always reach out to her uh, or to me, you know, to get the latest updates. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know, like I said, you know, it, it is business as usual as of now. Um, and again, you know, if you have any questions or concerns, by all means, reach out to either me or Valerie and we can definitely move up the chain for you. Thank you, Lyle. And what I'll do is maybe send um, uh, any emails from this committee for people that want to get on those weekly updates. I am not on it and I, you know, I, I would, would like to be. Yeah, and I was thinking that as I was talking, I was wondering if you were on the update. If anything, no. we'll do. I'll pass your contact information along to Valerie, um, and I'll and pass I, and I'll do the same. I'll and vice versa. I'll give her uh, your contact information. I'll give you hers. Um, you know, yeah. so if there's any information that you hear, again, she's on the ground, so you know. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm I, I'm probably gonna if Bruce lets me um, send his along as well, since he's in the area and he, Absolutely. you know, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Um, Valerie's updating us. She's doing a terrific job. I went by there yesterday and they replaced two foot thick steel beams. It's really mm -hmm. incredible. The con mm -hmm. construction work that's going on and it's very impressive and it's not so disruptive as we, we had anticipated. Thank you. Yeah. No. That's, yeah. We're, yeah. We're trying our best to uh, cause as much, uh, or I should say, the least amount of inconvenience to the neighborhood as possible. Um, you know, it's a large, large project. You know, so you know, we're trying to take our time with this, but also be mindful of the community that uh, is affected. Um, so just bear with us. You know, as far uh, as it's yeah. also it's also worse than what had been anticipated. And I, I know that from our own particular yeah. building where steel girders after 100 years, in your case, 40 years, yeah. look like Swiss cheese, so they have to replace them. Yeah, it's all, it's all necessary work, um, you know, that has to be done. It's overdue, um, you know, so it's long and tedious, but, you know, it, it's, it'll be well worth it in the long run. So, like I said, just bear with us. And, you know, again, if you have any questions or concerns, um, you know, by all means, reach out to me or Valerie. We can definitely put you in the right direction. It's no problem. All right. Thank you. I know you've been waiting, waiting, and I appreciate you sticking <laughs> no, with us. No problem. While. Um, I am wanting to adjourn, but I see a hand up by Steve Simon. Steve Simon, I'm calling on you, and I'm giving you 45 seconds <laughs> for the hey, final Lyle, word. <laughs> yeah, Lyle, I was confused a little bit earlier when you were talking about the northbound lane and the two southbound lanes being closed. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that for some period of time uh, there'll be no uh, uh, there'll be no through traffic along the viaduct? Oh no, there should be uh, there should be at least one lane of through traffic at all times. It's just okay. a matter of which one of those variations of lane closures you'll get. Um, it might be. Um, you know, one lane of you know one lane of traffic or two lanes of traffic that are inaccessible, but there should be at least one lane of traffic that you can use to go north or south along the viaduct in the in the meantime. All right, I also have to get added to that newsletter list. Okay. I was about to say, I think you need to be on that newsletter also, so yeah. no problem. All right. No problem. Um, with that, may I thank everybody again and move to adjourn? Is that okay? Second. And anyone? Everyone? I move we adjourn. I second it. All right. I'm in favor. Excellent. Everybody continue to take good care.
And uh, I'll see you at the next one. Likewise. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. You too. Good night. Thanks, Chanel. Thanks, Ebenezer.